here with Ethan. Ethan had a, a rare opportunity to uh, spend some time with one of the world's greatest um, artists, photographers, um, and I'll let him tell you a little bit about that. And, yeah. Yeah, and indeed a filmmaker too. Yeah. Probably most famous cocksucker blues. Um, so today, I guess this morning in Inverness, I believe we lost one of the great humanitarian artists of our time. And I think uh, um, Robert Frank was one of these uh, rare individuals who could portray the humanity uh, or reflect humanity back to itself. And he came from Switzerland, came over to the United States, and he was known, um, well, became famous for his book, The Americans. He shot 27,000 shots approximately for that book. 83 of them made it in. So that just tells you his uh, unbelievable discipline in photography. And he had the rare and gifted sensitivity where he could go into all sorts of different walks of life and have people uh, be unguarded and he could show their uh, brilliance and their humanity and reflect that back into the United States in a way that I don't think any other photographer ever captured that time in the United States. How I met Robert Frank was through this stone here, which sounds a little strange. This is a stone of kindness. This is a, an art project that I'm working on. Uh, I found this stone up in Cape Breton where Robert Frank resides for approximately half the year every year up in Mabu. And I went down to New York City with this stone and part of the project was to just follow intuition. And I was out on the streets of New York and I came, I was in the Bowery and I knew that Robert Frank had lived somewhere down in the Bowery, I didn't know where. Um, and I went into <clears throat> this uh, place where the Yippies used to hang out. Um, uh, Abby, Abby Hoffman and because it just looked like a really interesting place to meet some people and take some photographs <clears throat> and I went outside and I met this amazing gentleman Manny Love who had a big zero on his shirt and he was sitting there watching me and I ended up getting a portrait with him and it's because of this gentleman Manny Love that I actually found Robert Frank in June right now. We went Manny Love, YouTube sensation, internet, Instagram, all them go try to, and now just like a typical New York day, you meet a new friend. And now I'm sitting here holding a stone of kindness. And this, I ain't gonna lie, I, I can feel a peace. I can feel a kindness. It's a beautiful day. And I have this nice, big energy. It's, some, it's crazy how you can hold energy in your hand. I'm literally holding the en energy in my hand. And I feel the vibes. Beautiful day. I said, you know, I have a hero that I've been looking for, uh, Robert Frank. I've never got to meet him. Um, and, and he goes, oh, he's just down the street here. <clears throat> and he sits in his window around 6 o'clock and usually is looking down on the sidewalk. Go down there and, and hold your stone up. So that's what I did. And there I looked up and there was this ghostly figure looking down. And I said, hey, you know, this, this stone comes from Cape Breton. And uh, I've seen your house, but I've never had a chance to meet you. And, and he said, I'll be down in half an hour. And so an hour later, June and Robert came down and, and I had the stone on the street, which you can see some of the photos. And we ended up sitting and talking for hours. And I had probably one of the greatest honors of my life. When June got up, she said, I'm going up to have a glass of wine. And would you take my seat and sit with Robert? And I got to sit with Robert for, I don't know, it seemed, well, it was quite timeless, but it seemed like it was about an hour, and it was the magic light at the end of the day in New York City, streaming the streets. And Robert was quite remarkable. You could tell he was completely present. He would say hello to everyone who walked by in this wonderful voice, hello. And most people would just ignore him and walk by. Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. Robert, what do you think about that wow. stone? Look at it. I think it's a stone. It's a stone. <laughs> but it's also... But it's one of a kind. I don't think they made more and more of them. I think it's the only one. Robert, of that but one. No, Robert, but what does this remind you of? Because I, I, I don't want to be the only one that's talking. No, I don't know. 
Does it have an eye? Or it reminds you of the solar system. Yes. The solar system. Look at it. It's, isn't oh, that right. the most beautiful stone? Gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah, it's like a magic stone, right? I've never seen actually, a more beautiful we're stone. We're going to feed the world with this stone. That's the idea, I think. Wow, that's, that's, that's that would really be magical. Really? How do you think it came about like that? I don't know. And do you know, you know, that know what I mean? It's so smooth the way it... it that's really old. Really old. You might have made that. In, in your sleep, <laughs> it's a beautiful stone. Do you know, it's because it's two stones. Yes, it's like okay. it's married, so, but it goes through. So, no, but think how long it took to make it into one stone. That's how old it is. That's as old as the earth almost. I, I've been finding, trying to find a way to be back in the magic realm of New York City. I think it is a magic realm. And this stone is, I'm hoping, going to give me a key to the city so that I can stay here, from, come like you, and come from Cape Breton and come down here um, and help feed the world uh, with food and art and, and, and music and poetry. I'm a romantic. And I'm crying up for the world. I have kids, too, so I have to do something. It's absolutely perfect. It is. It's really it's old. old. It's really old. Uh, one of the most in poignant uh, conversations we had was this tree that was planted 40 years ago. June and Robert planted this tree, and Robert said, isn't that amazing? That tree is pushing up the sidewalk. Uh, and we looked at this experience, sat together, and mostly we just sat and watched the beautiful light and the going by and um, appreciated the wonder of it all. And then uh, June came back down, we sat for a little while longer, and I walked Robert and June into their apartment. And this is a little bit of a funny story that tells a little bit about the character of their relationship maybe. But I walked in and there's these stairs that go up that uh, Robert and June would have to climb up to their apartment. And uh, so I was with Robert behind him and the first step, literally, is a very big step on these steps. And, uh, and I said, June, do you want, you know, should I help Robert up? Because he was having a hard time getting up this first step. June yelled down, he'll be fine. And, uh, and I think that sort of typifies the relationship that, you know, he, it, indeed, he did. He got up that first step, he went up the stairs, uh, and then I, I bid farewell and I went back out on the street and there was Robert's chair just sitting there by itself. And I took this just beautiful uh, uh, picture of his chair. It meant so much to me. Uh, it actually kind of broke my heart just seeing that. Uh, that chair is old, it has character. It may have been sat in for 40 years, these two chairs. Um, and uh, that was the last I saw of Robert. Um, I was hoping that I was going to get to go up and visit him in Mabu. Um, and bring the stone back. Um, but uh, he lived in a remarkable life. We've lost one of the greats today. And uh, it was such an honor to sit with him and have a, a little bit of time uh, to look through his eyes, you could say. So farewell, Robert. And um, we love you and you live on through all your amazing work and your images, uh, how you were able to capture such utter humanity all walks of life is truly remarkable. So here's to Robert.